right. Thank you guys for coming. Um, welcome to Your Voice 2022 Center Township Redistricting Forum. Your Voice 2022 is an information and engagement campaign to bring awareness to the Indianapolis Marion County Redistricting Process. The goal of Your Voice is to hear from Indianapolis residents about their priorities for mapping future city county council districts. This is the early stages of the process and your voice here really matters. In these forums, we hope to engage communities to greater understand their communities of interest within each district to assist in future mapping processes. I hope you have taken the opportunity to review the information depicted on the space on the easels. This information is depicting the current district makeup. Additionally, I hope you all have engaged with the activity and have provided us with information to better understand your communities here on, in Center Township. We have a few things that we are asking for people to keep in mind. Um, if you're coming up here to share, some of the things that we're asking are, what makes your community strong? What are some of the issues you have within your community? And what makes your community unique? Um, these serve as some of the examples of what we are looking for today. Additionally, I would like to acknowledge the members, um, council members who are able to attend the forum tonight. If you are in the room, can you please wave your hand? Anyone? We did have a few that left, but we wanted to give a brief moment to acknowledge them if they were here. All right. So to better explain the Your Voice 2022 campaign, we do have a short video um, that we're going to play for you up here on the screen. So give us a moment. Hello, I'm Macy Moore. In this video, I'll introduce you to Your Voice 2022, an information and engagement campaign to bring awareness to the Indianapolis Marion County redistricting process for 2022. The goal of Your Voice campaign is to hear from Indianapolis residents like you about your wants, needs, and vision for mapping future city county council districts. So you may be asking, what is redistricting and why does it matter? Redistricting is the process by which census data is used to redraw the lines and boundaries of electoral districts within the state. This process affects districts at all levels of government, from local school boards and city county councils to state legislatures and United States House of Representatives. The way that district lines are drawn puts voters together in groups. Through elections, these groups decide who will represent them at local, state, and national levels. The way a district lines are drawn is important. Ultimately, it can change who controls a governing body, change what policies get passed into law, and how resources are allocated. So how is city government in Indianapolis structured? Just as the United States government has the president and Congress, Indianapolis has a mayor who serves as the chief executive and council that serves as a legislative branch. All other Indiana counties have county councils and each city has its own local council. Indianapolis is unique in Indiana and in fact in much of the country because since 1969, the city and the county have been unified in many respects. We call it UniGov. There is a single legislative body for the city and county called the City County Council. The county continues to have several other officials who are separately elected, such as the prosecutor, clerk, recorder, assessor, and the treasurer. The Indianapolis City County Council initially had 29 members, 25 who were elected from geographic districts and four who were elected at large from across the county. The law changed a few years ago and now we have 25 counselors who are each elected from separate geographic districts. How are council districts set and do they change over time? The U.S. government conducts a census every 10 years. Once the numbers are in, a process is set in motion to review geographic districts from Congress to the state legislature to local councils around the state. State law requires those districts to be reviewed to account for the new population information. The census dictates how many seats in Congress each state will get, which is why states gain or lose seats in Congress every 10 years. State legislative leaders then work to ensure the state's congressional districts all have roughly the same number of residents 
to ensure equal representation. They also do the same for the districts of Indiana General Assembly, both the House and Senate. This process is called redistricting. Redistricting should accurately reflect population changes and meet statutory and other legal requirements. This process is used by lawmakers to equitably allocate representation in Congress, state, legislatures, and county and municipal councils. Each state has its own process in drawing district maps. By statute, the City County Council must redistrict Marion County Council districts before the end of the second year after a federal decennial census. This means the City County Council must review the districts and make any changes in 2022. State statute requires the City County Council to pass an ordinance that divides Marion County into 25 districts that, one, are compact, subject only to natural boundary lines, such as railroads, major highways, rivers, creeks, parks, and major industrial complexes. Two, contain as nearly as possible equal population, and three, do not cross precinct boundary lines. Precincts are the smallest geographic units in legislative districting. Several precincts are grouped together to make up a council district. The precinct boundaries must also be reviewed. The county executive, in the case of Marion County, the mayor, is charged with the task of re-precincting in conjunction with the new census. This is underway and must be completed before council redistricting can begin. How will the City County Council determine the new district boundaries? The current City County Council leadership team has decided to solicit broad public input on the council redistricting process. Accordingly, all City County Council members and all residents of Marion County have the opportunity to provide input into the redistricting process. Engaging Solutions is a local consulting firm that will facilitate public engagement in the redistricting process so all communities of interest will have an opportunity to be heard. A community of interest is a group of people from a particular geographic area who have similar social and economic interests. For example, some residents may want to share how important a community center is and why it would be valuable to have its service area and the community it serves be inside one or two districts instead of being split up among many districts. How would the public have an opportunity to provide input in the redistricting process? There will be nine public forums where Marion County residents can have a voice in the redistricting process. Participants will be encouraged to share their perspective on the greatest strengths of their local community along with their thoughts about what makes their neighborhoods unique and what their hopes are for its future. Each form, location, date, and time is listed on the Your Voice 2022 website. If you cannot participate in a public forum, you are encouraged to provide your comments in the designated space on the website. In March 2022, after all forms are complete, a report will be published on the public input process. Maps will be introduced to the City County Council for review and consideration in the spring of 2022. And a final redistricting ordinance will be submitted to the City County Council for a vote at the conclusion of the redistricting process. Please plan to participate in a form. This is an opportunity for your voice to be heard in the Marion County redistricting process. We look forward to seeing you at one of the forums. Um, as we move to the public comment portion of this meeting, we would like to remind the public of a few ground rules. In order for everyone to have a fair chance to speak and be heard, it is important that we observe the following rules. First, each speaker will be limited to two minutes. Second, any public comment must reasonably relate to the topic of redistricting. Third, speakers who stray from the subject under consideration or become repetitive may be asked to move on to their next point or conclude their comments. Finally, attendees who are disruptions um, that prevent tonight's meeting from proceeding in a reasonably efficient manner will be removed. Please remember that some types of speech, uh, threatening speech, or incitements of violence aren't protected under the First Amendment. 
We will deal with those issues if they come up, however, we do not think that they will. We may now proceed to the public input portion of tonight's meeting. Um, I will come down, just raise your hands, and let me know if you want to speak. Is anyone interested in speaking, sharing their thoughts on the community, their strengths, concerns, comments or thoughts about our issues? Strengths is that our housing stock is really diverse. Um, 
some of those old homes that have been turned into condos, um, but no one could afford to live in them. Um, and so then we have carriage houses throughout the neighborhood, duplexes, triplexes. So our rents are lower than average, even though our mortgages are higher than average. And so we really actually have a very socioeconomically diverse neighborhood. Um, and that, I think, is one of our strengths. Um, and it's been difficult as the neighborhoods around are gentrifying a lot. Um, a lot of you know, the downtown population, I think, grew for the first time in six decades now. And so uh, Old North Side did, Fall Creek Place, um, Maples from Fall Creek, um, and Heron Morton Place and Kennedy King have kind of been holding on there, where our change has not been so fast that you could call it um, gentrification. Uh, but, uh, but there has been a long time a culture of um, trying to protect that diversity and equity and inclusion. So we're a historic district, and back in the 80s, even when we were becoming a historic district, we wrote the anti-gentrification language into our preservation plan. So that's one of our strengths, but it's become really difficult to preserve affordability downtown. Taxes keep going up. Some of our anchor residents have trouble um, staying on top of those taxes. Um, and we're looking for relief for some of our anchor residents who shouldn't probably need to pay those higher tax rates. Um, we're also a, a strong arts district. We've been really lucky to have Harrison Center of the Arts there and Joanna Taft as a leader there. We've got a couple of musicals. Uh, we host Tapestry Art Fair every year. Uh, so it's really just an eclectic and interesting neighborhood. Um, we're also lucky that Bob Hossley lives in the neighborhood, I guess. One of the things we're worried about, uh, so we get to hang out with them when we clean up trash and things like that. Um, but uh, um, one of the things we're worried about when we think about center township redistricting is um, as we've been trying to preserve diversity and, and equity uh, and inclusion in the neighborhood, we've been watching neighborhoods around us change more quickly. And um, when we look at a map like this one, where you can really just see that legacy of redlining um, throughout those neighborhoods to the north of us, um, being in a neighborhood that has this mixed socioeconomic status means that we often have people who can leverage their political capital uh, to, to make change. And um, we're worried that if those lines get redrawn, some of the neighborhoods to the north of us uh, may not be as well represented as they are in District 11. Hi, Bob. <laughs> Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Again, you can share things about your communities of interest, advocacy concerns, comments about redistricting. Hi, my name is Victoria, and I live in the Hermorton Town area as well. And one of my main concerns is watching over time, <coughs> excuse me, the increase of our property taxes. Um, I know it's happening um, throughout Indianapolis, and Area, other areas, but it's, it's to the point where it's just each year. I mean, for a while there, it used to be like maybe every seven years or every, <clears throat> you know, eight years or so, but now it's every year your taxes are going up. And it's just to me, even though there's supposed to be a cap, 
you don't feel that cap. And even if you appeal, you never win your appeals, uh, just because they base it off of the value of the homes that they're, how they're selling. And we all know that the homes are selling now topping out more than what the value should really be, just because of how things are going along with the lack of supplies and demand. And, but I just feel in my heart that it's just not right um, that uh, the taxes should be as they are, and no one is really, really looking at this. You get more talk, but there's no action, and that's really irritating. And I just hate to see that happen um, to all of us. So that's my comment. Thank you.
the information or the answers to our questions. Um, so I would keep signs in the front. And those were to give reminders and updates about your voice 2022, the engagement process. However, um, as I said previously, if you do have questions, please send them to your voice 2022 at engagementsolutions.com and those questions will be answered. If that makes sense. We're doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it.
Um, so I, I did want to uh, add to what makes it special. Uh, ours is built for 4628, 4622, and 4602. Um, Riverside Park is part of that, Mary University, Flannery House area. Uh, this was an area that had been redlined and has received a lot of, I'm saying not a lot, it's received a lack of support throughout the years and it's been on a major comeback. We've got a lot of historic spaces um, between the firehouses, between the center house, between um, the old, we, we, if you guys didn't know, the very first uh, remote library is actually in the Mural of West on Clifford Street. Um, the organizations and the community that's there have really been putting a lot of effort into trying to rebuild into not only a big arts and culture, but also improving our, on our schools. We just got Riverside High School within the last uh, couple of years, and that has been a big boom to our area. We're right now having the Riverside Park Master Plan. Uh, we're having all these things that are happening right now. Uh, and so I just wanted to kind of point out that the New Northwest is on the move, it's been on the rise, um, and there's a lot a lot of our folks who have, uh, who have lived in the city all their life at some point in the time came from this area. Um, and so it's, it's not only, we talk about like Indiana Avenue being historic, we talk about some other places, but the Northwest has been historically where people have raised families, uh, have, we've had serious professionals there, um, and we're trying to get that back. And we're doing a really good job, I believe, with the collaboration of not only all the organizations, but also all of the residents that have been on the move. I have personally seen a huge growth in resident input, uh, improving community engagement with the organizations, the city, and the residents amongst themselves. Uh, and welcome you all to come and join us at any given time. Uh, I can always get my email with Bob uh, or anyone here, but uh, we would love to see y'all out there and would love your support too. So thank you. Thank you. essentially what the footprint of what downtown Indianapolis looks like. Uh, we're, we're going, our project will expand downtown Indianapolis with access, we hope, which will encourage walkability, bikeability, uh, creating a new footprint of what downtown Indianapolis will be. Uh, it's a very exciting project. The valley itself dates back to the 1880s. Uh, we're a very old neighborhood uh, with the industrial, we're part of the old industrial rust belt for sure. Uh, we hope our project engages uh, downtown Indianapolis into the White River, uh, where we can actually interact with the White River, where the White River will become a part of downtown Indianapolis. Uh, we hope we're the focal point of that. We, we hope we're the focal point, as I said, uh, to create a more walkable, bikeable city. So essentially the valley, uh, our neighborhood is the focal point of all this. This redistricting is going to be very important to us because again, our boundaries, we're expanding downtown Indianapolis, hopefully to make a more sustainable, uh, a more sustainable city that can better endure uh, hardships like COVID uh, with more housing, affordable housing, et cetera. We're, so we're very excited about that. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? <laughs>
see the question as yeah. yeah. Okay, so her question has to do with the state redistricting and the city redistricting. And personally, I cannot answer that question. I, I, I know I said it for Jesus. <laughs> I so she, she can probably go with that word again. So, if you do have questions that I can't answer, I can try to go to find someone. You said White River and the White River. White River. Anyone? Anyone else? Uh, 
Virginia Avenue uh, with the Eco. So that's a really important landmark for us, and the big reason why I stayed earlier. We've got three different council districts that represent that area, and you know institutions like uh, Fountain Fletcher, which is the old uh, used to be called the Fountain Square Merchants Association, uh, Southeast Neighborhood Development, and Southeast Community Services. All these institutions really kind of uh, represent those neighborhoods and more, but that is really the core of uh, the community that we see. Even though it's different neighborhood, uh, different neighborhood associations, but the Virginia Avenue corridor is really what really kind of brings those communities together in a really common interest.
What are some of your advocacy concerns? She shared she cares about the environment. Or any other advocacy concerns that you would like to share tonight? I can only check the current air quality. <laughs> Sorry. See you again. Actually, uh, 
we're building with a coalition to actually fix every single alley in the near northwest uh, to oppose illegal dumping and crime and drug use. Because a lot of people, were, every time we do a cleanup with AIB or with the neighborhood association, we're finding heroin needles or whatnot. So um, we're working with the EPA on this. Um, and so we're building with a coalition to get that thing done. So, but it takes collaboration, it takes communication, that is the key, and it takes proper engagement. It can't just be someone swooping down to save, and it can't be someone being the only person holding the, the entire community up. You have to do it together. So that's the only one thing I will say, but those are my values. I'm sorry, I went off. No, no, no. So, good awesome, but invaluable input. Um, does anyone else have anything they would like to share? there to answer any of your questions. 